Hey everyone, this is Ben with the Tiger's Den, and today we're going to talk about why you shouldn't mill your opponent in Magic the Gathering. So for those of you who aren't familiar with milling, that's a term that comes from this 5th edition card called Millstone, with nice Kaya Foglio art, hi Kaya Foglio. And it's a card that let you put the top two cards of any player's library into their graveyard. And since then, the term mill has come to be used in many card games and board games, but I believe it came from Magic the Gathering originally, and this is why. So, Millstone obviously is not in standard right now. It has not been in standard for a very long time. But we do have cards that, take, that use this effect in standard. A really common one is Enter the God Eternals, which, you know, it's there for the four damage and the four life gain and the zombie you get, all really cool. But then also target player puts the top four into their library. And the way that I often see this card used is my opponent will cast it and they will just instinctively target me with the mill four because, oh, I'm getting rid of some of your cards. That's good. It puts me ahead. You know, you're closer to losing by decking yourself by trying to draw a card. You don't have any. Well, first, that's that almost never happens unless your deck is built to do that, so put that out of your mind for now. But even without that, milling your opponent, unless you have a way of capitalizing on it, is almost always the wrong decision. We'll get into exceptions later, but just in the dark, you should almost always, when possible, be targeting yourself with these effects. Because, um, one, you're actually not making your position any better by milling your opponent unless you're specifically set up to do so. But even in that case, there are cards like Chandra Acolyte of Flame. I've had multiple games where I have Chandra in play, my opponent targets me with the mill portion of Enter the God Eternals, and I say, great, now I have even more spells in my graveyard that I can flash back. And you might be saying, well, if you wanted those spells, it's better to have them in your graveyard for your opponent, uh, to put them into your graveyard, than for you to draw them, because now you can't cast a spell from your hand, your opponent's ahead. But did they put themselves ahead, though, really? Because... Now I just get to draw a different card, and maybe that card is even better than the cards they put in my graveyard. There's no way for us to know that the card I was going to draw isn't worse than the card that I now get to draw because I've been milled, and those cards that have been milled are in my graveyard ready for me to flash back whenever I want them. Uh, even though Chandra isn't a huge force a lot of the time right now, we have Cavalier of Thorns, which is all over the place right now, and Cavalier of Thorns loves it when you put cards into your graveyard because that gives them additional cards to bring back when it dies. So, th you know, th this card is everywhere. So it is very risky in the dark just to say, okay, plop those top four into your graveyard, because, I mean, that's what Cavalier of Thorns' first ability, or the second ability does, is it just, it loves when you do that because it says, great, you're doing my job for me, now I have twice as many cards I can choose from, thank you so much. So, that is a very risky proposition when you don't know what your opponent's deck is doing, and even if you do know what your opponent's deck is doing, it's often not really doing anything to mill your opponent. Because, as we were saying with the Chandra example, sure, when I used to build, uh, back in the day, I used to build mill decks, and I would say, all right, look at all those great cards that I milled. You're not drawing that card now, Dad. But that didn't really do anything in those cases. Unless I had a deck that was built to capitalize on milling or to win by milling my opponent, putting those cards away didn't actually make his draws any worse, because when you mill your opponent, the odds of making their next draw better are the same as making their next draw worse in most circumstances. So, yeah, so it feels good to get rid of those good cards, but, and, and so that's kind of like an immediate feedback, right? You get to see the cool cards that you got rid of and now your opponent doesn't get to draw. But if you mill me for four and you see a bunch of good cards, what you don't see is that maybe the next card that I draw is now my Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh, and I get to lock you out of the game four turns earlier because I drew that so much faster. And, for all you know, you're milling me over four useless cards for me to get to that Bolas. So it's basically a wash uh, in terms of making your opponents draw better or worse, but now they have extra fuel, possibly. So, when possible, it's usually the best thing to target yourself with these effects. However, there are exceptions to that. As I stated, if you're playing a mill deck, absolutely by all means, fire those mill cards off on your opponent. Hopefully you'll have something like Ashiok in your deck, where you can turn off the incremental value that your opponent can get off of having their cards milled over. But even if you don't, that's your game plan, and you, you just gotta hit it and just eat whatever value your opponent can get off of. Another uh, less direct example is if your opponent has a scry or surveil effect and scries to the top. Say your opponent scries two, leaves them both on top. Even if they just leave one on top, it's almost always a good idea to mill them at that point because they feel that that card that is on top is better than the average draw they could get. So 
by resetting that, even if it's only the 51st percentile of good cards they could draw, you are reducing the the statistical likelihood that they get a a good card there. Because you're, you're exchanging something that they do want for something that's totally random. If they didn't want that card, they would have put it to the bottom. Another time is if you have cards like Surgical Extraction in your deck, which, you know, it's not in standard, but any time that you can capitalize on things that you have put into your opponent's graveyard, that can be worthwhile. Um, you know, or something like, you know, a Tarmogoyf, which obviously also not in standard, but, you know, pumping your Tarmogoyf by putting more cards into the graveyard. Times like that, you know, it can be fine to mill your opponent. And then finally, times when your opponent has ways of searching their library. And this one doesn't get brought up very often, even when people are talking about milling. But if you can mill your opponent and they have ways of searching their library, you are actually reducing the number of choices that they have for searching when they search through their library. So if you manage to nab like two Field of the Dead, and your opponent has a Field of the Dead in their opener and then draws a couple of Golos, that last Golos can't find that last Field of the Dead because two of them have already been put into the graveyard. So in times when they are going through their deck looking for specific things, you can actually reduce the number of things they can go through and get by milling your opponent. And the fact that they have, you know, if you hit a bunch of garbage cards and one Field of the Dead, the fact that you hit all those garbage cards doesn't actually make their search off of Field of the Dead any better because they just get to find the card they want. They're not, like, going through the top card or the top couple cards. They're looking through the whole thing, so the number of cards in there is irrelevant to finding the right one. So anyway, that's a couple of cases when you would want to mill, but generally, uh, always be looking to target yourself whenever possible. Even if you don't have a way of capitalizing on it, you don't know exactly what's in your opponent's deck most of the time, and they often do have ways of getting advantage off of that, especially in the current meta where there are lots of cards that like to have those things in the graveyard. So anyway, that's just a quick video today to address something that I see happen a lot in Arena that I feel like people can be doing a little better. So hopefully some of you out there found this uh, educational or at least a little bit entertaining. Uh, and that'll do it. So thank you for joining me. Uh, it's always so much fun doing these. If you like the content, give it a like, a subscribe, give it a comment, let us know what we did well, what we could do better, and keep checking out for more video game and Magic the Gathering content. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.